Covering news where you live. This is 5 News. Well, hey, thank you for joining us here on this Friday for the latest news and weather where you live. I'm Joe Ellison, a Rogers psychiatrist who held an executive position on the Arkansas State Medical Board is now pleading not guilty to two charges of Medicaid fraud. The counts alleged that during a Dr. Brian Hyatt's tenure as the director of Northwest Medical's Behavioral Health Unit in Springdale, he allegedly committed large scale fraud by billing his care under the highest possible code almost 100 percent of the time. Dozens of lawsuits also claim he falsely, falsely rather imprisoned his patients, allegedly keeping them in the behavior unit as long as possible to get more Medicaid funding. He could face a minimum sentence of six years in prison and maximum of 30. As of now, there's no trial date set. And Arkansas, governor's, Arkansas Governor Sarah Huckabee Sun Sanders signed a new executive banning what she calls woke and anti-woman words from state government. Five News reporter Parker Abels explains what's in the executive order from the Republican governor and reactions from members of the Arkansas Democratic Party. In a moment, I'll sign an executive order banning a number of all sorts of ridiculous words from state government documents. Those include words like pregnant people, laboring person, birth giver, and several other nonsense terms that have cropped up in recent years. Those the words of Governor Sanders as she signed the executive order banning all the words she mentioned and more. The governor then went on to say this is the start of the right fighting back against non-gender specific terms. They're using nonsense words to erase women and girls and more importantly to erase our voices and our experiences. Today we're taking a stand against woke nonsense. It's the left that decided that woman is a dirty word. It's the left that decided we needed to toss out basic biology and basic grammar along with it. I think they're just mad that conservatives are starting to fight back and they better get ready because we're just getting started. However, the president of the Young Democrats of Arkansas, Allison Grigsby Swetman, says this order is not what the governor should be focusing on. Arkansans deserve a governor who focuses on issues that matter and that actually affect our lives and who doesn't use executive orders to fight culture wars over problems that don't really exist, things that haven't even been defined, words like wokeness. Those are not real problems. Sweatman also says this order will do nothing but divide the state even further. Using executive orders in this way further divides our state and distracts from the issues that we need to be paying attention to, the issues that we expect her to govern about. Covering news where you live, Parker Abels, 5 News. Well, before we get to a more news where you live, let's get a check of that weekend forecast with meteorologist Zach Scott. Hey, Zach. All right, Joe. So, yeah, uh, we've got some warmer weather moving in here. Now, I know we were really excited about the cooler weather that came in last weekend. Now we're seeing the warmer side of fall as we uh, go into this weekend. Back-to-back -back weekends where we had a fall front move through, not this weekend. Well, actually, we do have a front. Now you're sitting there going, Zach, do you know what's going on? I do know what's going on. It's just that this is a very weak front that's coming in Saturday into Sunday where it's going to drop temperatures a degree or two. We are much warmer than where we were last week. We're talking about temperatures for your Friday, mid to upper 70s, northwest Arkansas, low to mid 80s in the River Valley. Again, we're going to be warmer than that as we get into Saturday. Saturday is going to be the warmest day of this stretch. Uh, we're looking at temperatures really falling mostly in the 50s could have a few upper 40s mixed in to get our Saturday going and then as we get into Saturday as promised here you go we're warmer clouds will be increasing so you get a lot of sunshine blue skies for your Friday clouds increasing as we go through your Saturday we'll have a mix of sun and clouds on your Sunday but look at those temperatures uh, widespread mid to some upper 80s mixing in uh, in the River Valley for Saturday all right here we go Joe last thing I want to show you the football forecast for the Razorbacks 11 a.m. kick for late October standards Again, it could be cooler, it could be wetter, it could be a lot of things, but you don't think about it being this, where temperatures are warming through the 70s as you're heading home from the game, celebrating a win, we could be seeing temperatures move into the low 80s. What a forecast. 
Essex. We'll see you at the game, Zach. All right, today the skies of Poto are filled with the hot air balloons. And if you'd like to ride in a tethered hot air balloon, just head out to the LaFleur County Fairgrounds to join in on this 15th annual event. Gates open at noon on Friday and the carnival will open at 6 that same night. The Poto Balloon Fest will also be up and running on Saturday with gates opening at 9 a.m. Poto City leaders say the festival is great for social media pictures and draws in photographers from all over the world. The Poto Balloon Fest has also grown from a small event in 2006 to one of the most anticipated events to date. And the Arkansas and Oklahoma Departments of Transportation are working on turning Highway 412 into an interstate. Five News reporter Lauren Spencer gives us a look at preliminary designs and learn just how long this will take. People will say oh, this is going to take a long time to happen. Sure, it's going to take a long time, but you have to start somewhere. On Tuesday, RDOT and ODOT met with the community to get input on adding Highway 412 to its interstate system. Dave Parker with RDOT says this area was deemed of high importance in the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act signed into law by President Biden in 2021. As well as for commerce and just overall United States travel said, hey, we've got to get US 412 up to interstate standards in this area. Those interstate standards, he says, would mean the whole stretch has to handle interstate speed limits. It's going to take a whole lot. It would connect Interstate 35 in Oklahoma to Interstate 49 in Arkansas, going through Salem Springs. Uh, it's not just about qu quality of life is certainly super important for people living in this area. This area is growing like crazy. While also taking public comment, RDOT is starting environmental studies in the area. We look at the groundwater, we look at the land, we look at the air, we look at uh, nature in that area, all that. That's that's way before we even look at the design of the road and impact uh, you know, to someone's business or home. That has to come first. Parker says this meeting was one of the first steps in a very long process and could take decades to complete. It's hard to imagine some of this when you think, oh, it's going to be 20 to 30 years when all this is done. Well, just think about how Interstate 49 ever came to be. In Salem Springs, covering news where you live, Lauren Spencer, 5 News. Well, thank you for joining us here for the latest news and weather. I'm Joe Ellison. Have a great weekend.